number one of sea poems an idiosyncratic selection this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. recording by david wales sea poems an idiosyncratic selection by various number one the rhyme of the ancient mariner by samuel taylor coleridge part the first it is an ancient mariner and he stoppeth one of three by thy long grey beard and glittering eye now wherefore stoppest thou me the bridegroom's doors are opened wide and i am next of kin the guests are met the feast is set mayst hear the merry din he holds him with his skinny hand there was a ship quoth he hold off unhand me greybeard loon off stoons his hand dropped he he holds him with his glittering eye the wedding guest stood still and listens like a three years child the mariner hath his will the wedding guest sat on a stone he cannot choose but hear and thus spake on that ancient man the bright-eyed mariner the ship was cheered the harbour cleared merrily did we drop below the kirk below the hill below the lighthouse top the sun came up upon the left out of the sea came he and he shone bright and on the right went down into the sea higher and higher every day till over the mast at noon the wedding guest here beat his breast for he heard the loud bassoon the bride hath paced into the hall red as a rose is she nodding their heads before her goes the merry minstrelsy the wedding guest he beat his breast yet he cannot choose but hear and thus spake on that ancient man the bright-eyed mariner and now the storm-blast came and he was tyrannous and strong he struck with his o'ertaking wings and chased south along with sloping masts and dipping prow as who pursued with yell and blow still treads the shadow of his foe and forward bends his head the ship drove fast loud roared the blast and southward i we fled and now there came both mist and snow and it grew wondrous cold and ice mast high came floating by as green as emerald and through the drifts the snowy cliffs did send a dismal sheen nor shapes of men nor beasts we ken the ice was all between the ice was here the ice was there the ice was all around it cracked and growled and roared and howled like noises in a swound at length did cross an albatross thorough the fog it came as if it had been a christian soul we hailed it in god's name it ate the food it ne'er had eat and round and round it flew the ice did split with a thunder fit the helmsman steered us through and a good south wind sprung up behind the albatross did follow and every day for food or play came to the mariners hallo in mist or cloud on mast or shroud it perched for vespers nine whiles all the night through fog smoke white glimmered the white moonshine god save thee ancient mariner from the fiends that plague thee thus why lookest thou so with my cross-bow i shot the albatross part the second the sun now rose upon the right out of the sea came he still hid in mist and on the left went down into the sea and the good south wind did blow behind but no sweet bird did follow nor any day for food or play came to the mariners hallo and i had done an hellish thing and it would work em woe for all averred i had killed the bird that made the breeze to blow ah wretch said they the bird to slay that made the breeze to blow nor dim nor red like god's own head the glorious sun uprist then all averred i had killed the bird that brought the fog and mist twas right said they such birds to slay that bring the fog and mist 
the fair breeze blew the white foam flew the furrow followed free we were the first that ever burst into that silent sea down dropped the breeze the sails dropped down twas sad as sad could be and we did speak only to break the silence of the sea all in a hot and copper sky the bloody sun at noon right up above the mast did stand no bigger than the moon day after day day after day we stuck nor breath nor motion as idle as a painted ship upon a painted ocean water water everywhere and all the boards did shrink water water everywhere nor any drop to drink the very deep did rot o oh, christ that ever this should be yea slimy things did crawl with legs upon the slimy sea about about in reel and rout the death-fires danced at night the water like a witch's oils burnt green and blue and white and some in dreams assured were of the spirit that plagued us so nine fathom deep he had followed us from the land of mist and snow and every tongue through utter drought was withered at the root we could not speak no more than if we had been choked with soot ah well a day what evil looks had i from old and young instead of the cross the albatross about my neck was hung part the third there passed a weary time each throat was parched and glazed each eye a weary time a weary time how glazed each weary eye when looking westward i beheld a something in the sky at first it seemed a little speck and then it seemed a mist it moved and moved and took at last a certain shape i wist a speck a mist a shape i wist and still it neared and neared as if it dodged a water sprite it plunged and tacked and veered with throats unslaked with black lips baked we could not laugh nor wail through utter drought all dumb we stood i bit my arm i sucked the blood and cried a sail a sail with throats unslaked with black lips baked agape they heard me call gramercy they for joy did grin and all at once their breath drew in as they were drinking all see see i cried she tacks no more hither to work us wheel without a breeze without a tide she steadies with upright keel the western wave was all aflame the day was well nigh done almost upon the western wave rested the broad bright sun when that strange shape drove suddenly betwixt us and the sun and straight the sun was flecked with bars heaven's mother send us grace as if through a dungeon grate he peered with broad and burning face alas thought i and my heart beat loud how fast she nears and nears are those her sails that glance in the sun like restless gossamers are those her ribs through which the sun did peer as through a grate and is that woman all her crew is that a death and are there two is death that woman's mate her lips were red her looks were free her locks were yellow as gold her skin was as white as leprosy the nightmare life in death was she who thicks man's blood with cold the naked hulk alongside came and the twain were casting dice the game is done i've won i've won quoth she and whistles thrice the sun's rim dips the stars rush out at one stride comes the dark with far heard whisper o'er the sea off shot the spectre bark we listened and looked sideways up fear at my heart as at a cup my life-blood seemed to sip the stars were dim and thick the night the steersman's face by his lamp gleamed white from the sails the dew did drip till clumb above the eastern bar the horned moon with one bright star within the nether tip 
one after one by the star-dogged moon too quick for groan or sigh each turned his face with a ghastly pang and cursed me with his eye four times fifty living men and i heard nor sigh nor groan with heavy thump a lifeless lump they dropped down one by one the souls did from their bodies fly they fled to bliss or woe and every soul it passed me by like the whiz of my crossbow part the fourth i fear thee ancient mariner i fear thy skinny hand and thou art long and lank and brown as is the ribbed sea-sand i fear thee and thy glittering eye and thy skinny hand so brown fear not fear not thou wedding guest this body dropped not down alone alone all all alone alone on a wide wide sea and never a saint took pity on my soul in agony the many men so beautiful and they all dead did lie and a thousand thousand slimy things lived on and so did i i looked upon the rotting sea and drew my eyes away i looked upon the rotting deck and there the dead men lay i looked to heaven and tried to pray but or ere ever a prayer had gushed a wicked whisper came and made my heart as dry as dust i closed my lids and kept them close and the balls like pulses beat for the sky and the sea and the sea and the sky lay like a load on my weary eye and the dead were at my feet the cold sweat melted from their limbs nor rot nor reek did they the look with which they looked on me had never passed away an orphan's curse would drag to hell a spirit from on high but oh more horrible than that is a curse in a dead man's eye seven days seven nights i saw that curse and yet i could not die the moving moon went up the sky and nowhere did abide softly she was going up and a star or two beside her beams bemocked the sultry main like april hoar-frost spread but where the ship's huge shadow lay the charmed water burnt alway a still and awful red beyond the shadow of the ship i watched the water-snakes they moved in tracks of shining white and when they reared the elfish light fell off in oary flakes within the shadow of the ship i watched their rich attire blue glossy green and velvet black they coiled and swam and every track was a flash of golden fire o oh, happy living things no tongue their beauty might declare a spring of love gushed from my heart and i blessed them unaware sure my kind saint took pity on me and i blessed them unaware the self-same moment i could pray and from my neck so free the albatross fell off and sank like lead into the sea part the fifth o oh, sleep it is a gentle thing beloved from pole to pole to mary queen the praise be given she sent the gentle sleep from heaven that slid into my soul the silly buckets on the deck that had so long remained i dreamt that they were filled with dew and when i awoke it rained my lips were wet my throat was cold my garments all were dank sure i had drunken in my dreams and still my body drank i moved and could not feel my limbs i was so light almost i thought that i had died in sleep and was a blessed ghost and soon i heard a roaring wind it did not come anear but with its sound it shook the sails that were so thin and sear the upper air burst into life and a hundred fire flags sheen to and fro they were hurried about and to and fro and in and out the wan stars danced between and the coming wind did roar more loud and the sails did sigh like sedge and the rain poured down from one black cloud the moon was at its edge the thick black cloud was cleft 
and still the moon was at its side like waters shot from some high crag the lightning fell with never a jag a river steep and wide the loud wind never reached the ship yet now the ship moved on beneath the lightning and the moon the dead men gave a groan they groaned they stirred they all uprose nor spake nor moved their eyes it had been strange even in a dream to have seen those dead men rise the helmsman steered the ship moved on yet never a breeze up blew the mariners all gan work the ropes where they were wont to do they raised their limbs like lifeless tools we were a ghastly crew the body of my brother's son stood by me knee to knee the body and i pulled at one rope but he said naught to me i fear thee ancient mariner be calm thou wedding guest twas not those souls that fled in pain which to their courses came again but a troop of spirits blessed for when it dawned they dropped their arms and clustered round the mast sweet sounds rose slowly through their mouths and from their bodies passed around around flew each sweet sound then darted to the sun slowly the sounds came back again now mixed now one by one sometimes a dropping from the sky i heard the skylark sing sometimes all little birds that are how they seemed to fill the sea and air with their sweet jargoning and now twas like all instruments now like a lonely flute and now it is an angel's song that makes the heavens be mute it ceased yet still the sails made on a pleasant noise till noon a noise like of a hidden brook in the leafy month of june that to the sleeping woods all night singeth a quiet tune till noon we quietly sailed on yet never a breeze did breathe slowly and smoothly went the ship moved onward from beneath under the keel nine fathom deep from the land of mist and snow the spirit slid and it was he that made the ship to go the sails at noon left off their tune and the ship stood still also the sun right up above the mast had fixed her to the ocean but in a minute she gan stir with a short uneasy motion backwards and forwards half her length with a short uneasy motion then like a pawing horse let go she made a sudden bound it flung the blood into my head and i fell down in a swound how long in that same fit i lay i have not to declare but ere my living life returned i heard and in my soul discerned two voices in the air is it he quoth one is this the man by him who died on cross with his cruel bow he laid full low the harmless albatross the spirit who bideth by himself in the land of mist and snow he loved the bird that loved the man who shot him with his bow the other was a softer voice as soft as honey-dew quoth he the man hath penance done and penance more will do part the sixth first voice but tell me tell me speak again thy soft response renewing what makes that ship drive on so fast what is the ocean doing second voice still as a slave before his lord the ocean hath no blast his great bright eye most silently up to the moon is cast if he may know which way to go for she guides him smooth or grim see brother see how graciously she looketh down on him first voice but why drives on that ship so fast without or wave or wind second voice the air is cut away before and closes from behind fly brother fly more high more high or we shall be belated for slow and slow that ship will go when the mariner's trance is abated i woke and we were sailing on as in a gentle weather twas night calm night the moon was high the dead men stood together 
all stood together on the deck for a charnel dungeon fitter all fixed on me their stony eyes that in the moon did glitter the pang the curse with which they died had never passed away i could not draw my eyes from theirs nor turn them up to pray and now this spell was snapped once more i viewed the ocean green and looked far forth yet little saw of what had else been seen like one that on a lonesome road doth walk in fear and dread and having once turned round walks on and turns no more his head because he knows a frightful fiend doth close behind him tread but soon there breathed a wind on me nor sound nor motion made its path was not upon the sea in ripple or in shade it raised my hair it fanned my cheek like a meadow gale of spring it mingled strangely with my fears yet it felt like a welcoming swiftly swiftly flew the ship yet she sailed softly too sweetly sweetly blew the breeze on me alone it blew o oh, dream of joy is this indeed the lighthouse top i see is this the hill is this the kirk is this mine own country we drifted o'er the harbour bar and i with sobs did pray o oh, let me be awake my god or let me sleep all way the harbour bay was clear as glass so smoothly it was strewn and on the bay the moonlight lay and the shadow of the moon the rock shone bright the kirk no less that stands above the rock the moonlight steeped in silentness the steady weathercock and the bay was white with silent light till rising from the same full many shapes that shadows were in crimson colours came a little distance from the prow those crimson shadows were i turned my eyes upon the deck o oh christ what saw i there each course lay flat lifeless and flat and by the holy rood a man all light a seraph man on every course there stood this seraph band each waved his hand it was a heavenly sight they stood as signals to the land each one a lovely light this seraph band each waved his hand no voice did they impart no voice but oh the silence sank like music on my heart but soon i heard the dash of oars i heard the pilot's cheer my head was turned perforce away and i saw a boat appear the pilot and the pilot's boy i heard them coming fast dear lord in heaven it was a joy the dead men could not blast i saw a third i heard his voice it was the hermit good he singeth loud his godly hymns that he makes in the wood he'll shrieve my soul he'll wash away the albatross's blood part the seventh this hermit good lives in that wood which slopes down to the sea how loudly his sweet voice he rears he loves to talk with mariners that come from a far country he kneels at morn and noon and eve he hath a cushion plump it is the moss that wholly hides the rotted old oak stump the skiff boat neared i heard them talk why this is strange i trow where are those lights so many and fair that signal made but now strange by my faith the hermit said and they answered not our cheer the planks looked warped and see those sails how thin they are and sear i never saw aught like to them unless perchance it were brown skeletons of leaves that lag my forest brook along when the ivy tod is heavy with snow and the owlip whoops to the wolf below that eats the she-wolf's young dear lord it hath a fiendish look the pilot made reply i am afeard push on push on said the hermit cheerily the boat came closer to the ship but i nor spake nor stirred the boat came close beneath the ship and straight a sound was heard under the water it rumbled on still louder and more dread it reached the ship it split the bay the ship went down like lead 
stunned by that loud and dreadful sound which sky and ocean smote like one that hath been seven days drowned my body lay afloat but swift as dreams myself i found within the pilot's boat upon the whirl where sank the ship the boat spun round and round and all was still save that the hill was telling of the sound i moved my lips the pilot shrieked and fell down in a fit the holy hermit raised his eyes and prayed where he did sit i took the oars the pilot's boy who now doth crazy go laughed loud and long and all the while his eyes went to and fro ha ha quoth he full plain i see the devil knows how to row and now all in my own country i stood on the firm land the hermit stepped forth from the boat and scarcely he could stand o oh, shrieve me shrieve me holy man the hermit crossed his brow say quick quoth he i bid thee say what manner of man art thou forthwith this frame of mine was wrenched with a woeful agony which forced me to begin my tale and then it left me free since then at an uncertain hour that agony returns and till my ghastly tale is told this heart within me burns i pass like night from land to land i have strange power of speech that moment that his face i see i know the man that must hear me to him my tale i teach what loud uproar bursts from the door the wedding guests are there but in the garden bower the bride and bridemaid singing are and hark the little vesper bell which biddeth me to prayer o oh, wedding guest this soul hath been alone on a wide wide sea so lonely twas that god himself scarce seemed there to be o oh, sweeter than the marriage feast tis sweeter far to me to walk together to the kirk with a goodly company to walk together to the kirk and all together pray while each to his great father bends old men and babes and loving friends and youths and maidens gay farewell farewell but this i tell to thee thou wedding guest he prayeth well who loveth well both man and bird and beast he prayeth best who loveth best all things both great and small for the dear god who loveth us he made and loveth all the mariner whose eye is bright whose beard with age is o'er is gone and now the wedding guest turned from the bridegroom's door he went like one that hath been stunned and is of sense forlorn a sadder and a wiser man he rose the morrow morn end of the rhyme of the ancient mariner Number two of Sea Poems by Various. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Number two, The Kraken by Alfred Tennyson. Below the thunders of the upper deep, far, far beneath, in the abysmal sea, his antient, dreamless, uninvaded sleep, the Kraken sleepeth. Faintest sunlights flee about his shadowy sides above him swell huge sponges of millennial growth and height and far away into the sickly light from many a wondrous grot and secret cell unnumbered and enormous polypi winnow with giant arms the slumbering green there hath he lain for ages and will lie battening upon huge sea-worms in his sleep until the latter fire shall heat the deep then once by man and angels to be seen in roaring he shall rise and on the surface die end of the kraken number three of sea poems by various this librivox recording is in the public domain number three dover beach by matthew arnold the sea is calm to-night the tide is full the moon lies fair upon the straits on the french coast the light gleams and is gone the cliffs of england stand glimmering and vast 
out in the tranquil bay come to the window sweet is the night air only from the long line of spray where the sea meets the moon blanched land listen you hear the grating roar of pebbles which the waves draw back and fling at their return up the high strand begin and cease and then again begin with tremulous cadence slow and bring the eternal note of sadness in sophocles long ago heard it on the aegean and it brought into his mind the turbid ebb and flow of human misery we find also in the sound a thought hearing it by this distant northern sea the sea of faith was once too at the full and round earth's shore lay like the folds of a bright girdle furled but now i only hear its melancholy long withdrawing roar retreating to the breath of the night wind down the vast edges drear and naked shingles of the world ah love let us be true to one another for the world which seems to lie before us like a land of dreams so various so beautiful so new hath really neither joy nor love nor light nor certitude nor peace nor help for pain and we are here as on a darkling plain swept with confused alarms of struggle and flight where ignorant armies clash by night End of Dover Beach Number four of Sea Poems by Various. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Number four, Aerial Song, The Tempest, Act One, Scene Two, by William Shakespeare. Come unto these yellow sands, and then take hands, curtsied when you have, and kissed the wild waves' whist, foot it neatly here and there, and sweet sprites the burden bear. Hark! hark bow wow the watch-dogs bark bow wow hark hark i hear the strain of strutting chanticleer cry cock-a-doodle-doe full fathom five thy father lies of his bones are coral made those are pearls that were his eyes nothing of him that doth fade but doth suffer a sea change into something rich and strange sea nymphs hourly ring his knell ding dong hark now i hear them ding dong bell end of aerial song number five of sea poems by various this librivox recording is in the public domain number five a sea dirge by lewis carroll there are certain things as a spider a ghost the income tax gout an umbrella for three that i hate but the thing that i hate the most is a thing they call the sea pour some salt water over the floor ugly i'm sure you'll allow it to be suppose it extended a mile or more that's very like the sea beat a dog till it howls outright cruel but all very well for a spree suppose that he did so day and night that would be like the sea i had a vision of nursery maids tens of thousands passed by me all leading children with wooden spades and this was by the sea who invented those spades of wood who was it cut them out of the tree none i think but an idiot could or one that loved the sea it is pleasant and dreamy no doubt to float with thoughts as boundless and souls as free but suppose you are very unwell in the boat how do you like the sea there is an insect that people avoid whence is derived the verb to flee where have you been by it most annoyed in lodgings by the sea if you like your coffee with sand for dregs a decided hint of salt in your tea and a fishy taste in the very eggs by all means choose the sea and if with these dainties to drink and eat you prefer not a vestige of grass or tree and a chronic state of wet in your feet then um, i recommend the sea for i have friends who dwell by the coast 
pleasant friends they are to me it is when i am with them i wonder most that any one likes the sea they take me a walk though tired and stiff to climb the heights i madly agree and after a tumble or so from the cliff they kindly suggest the sea i try the rocks and i think it cool that they laugh with such an excess of glee as i heavily slip into every pool that skirts the cold cold sea end of a sea dirge number six of sea poems by various this librivox recording is in the public domain number six the jumblies by edward lear one they went to sea in a sieve they did in a sieve they went to sea in spite of all their friends could say on a winter's morn on a stormy day in a sieve they went to sea and when the sieve turned round and round and every one cried you'll all be drowned they cried aloud our sieve ain't big but we don't care a button we don't care a fig in a sieve we'll go to sea far and few far and few are the lands where the jumblies live their heads are green and their hands are blue and they went to sea in a sieve two they sailed away in a sieve they did in a sieve they sailed so fast with only a beautiful pea-green veil tied with a ribbon by way of a sail to a small tobacco-pipe mast and every one said who saw them go oh won't they be soon upset you know for the sky is dark and the voyage is long and happen what may it's extremely wrong in a sieve to sail so fast far and few far and few are the lands where the jumblies live their heads are green and their hands are blue and they went to sea in a sieve three the water it soon came in it did the water it soon came in so to keep them dry they wrapped their feet in a pinky paper all folded neat and they fastened it down with a pen and they passed the night in a crockery jar and each of them said how wise we are though the sky be dark and the voyage be long yet we never can think we were rash or wrong while round in our sieve we spin far and few far and few are the lands where the jumblies live their heads are green and their hands are blue and they went to sea in a sieve Four and all night long they sailed away and when the sun went down they whistled and warbled a moony song to the echoing sound of a coppery gong in the shade of the mountains brown o oh, tim below how happy we are when we live in a sieve and a crockery jar and all night long in the moonlight pale we sail away with a pea-green sail in the shade of the mountains brown far and few far and few are the lands where the jumblies live their heads are green and their hands are blue and they went to sea in a sieve five they sailed to the western sea they did to a land all covered with trees and they bought an owl and a useful cart and a pound of rice and a cranberry tart and a hive of silvery bees and they bought a pig and some green jackdaws and a lovely monkey with lollipop paw bang bang and a lovely monkey with lollipop paws and forty bottles of ring ree and no end of stilton cheese far and few far and few are the lands where the jumblies live their heads are green and their hands are blue and they went to sea in a sieve six and in twenty years they all came back in twenty years or more and every one said how tall they've grown for they've been in the lakes and the torrible zone and the hills of the chankly bore and they drank their health and gave them a feast of dumplings made of beautiful yeast and every one said if we only live we too will go to sea in a sieve to the hills of the chankly bore far and few far and few are the lands where the jumblies live their heads are green and their hands are blue and they went to sea in a sieve end of the jumblies
number seven of sea poems by various this librivox recording is in the public domain number seven dutch lullaby wink and blinken and nod by eugene field winken blinken and nod one night sailed off in a wooden shoe sailed on a river of misty light into a sea of dew where are you going and what do you wish the old moon asks the three we have come to fish for the herring fish that live in this beautiful sea nets of silver and gold have we said winken blinken and nod the old moon laughed and sung a song and they rocked in the wooden shoe and the wind that sped them all night long ruffled the waves of dew the little stars were the herring fish that lived in the beautiful sea now cast your nets wherever you wish but never afeard are we so cried the stars to the fishermen three winken blinken and nod all night long their nets they threw for the fish in the twinkling foam then down from the sky came the wooden shoe bringing the fishermen home twas all so pretty a sail it seems as if it could not be and some folk thought twas a dream they dreamed of sailing that beautiful sea but i shall name you the fishermen three winken blinken and nod winken and blinken are two little eyes and nod is a little head and the wooden shoe that sailed the skies is a wee one's trundle bed so shut your eyes while mother sings of wonderful sights that be and you shall see the beautiful things as you rock on the misty sea where the old shoe rocked the fishermen three winken blinken and nod end of the dutch lullaby number eight of sea poems by various this librivox recording is in the public domain number eight down to the sea in ships psalm one o seven verses twenty one through thirty one king james version of the bible oh that men would praise the lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men and let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing they that go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters these see the works of the lord and his wonders in the deep for he commandeth and raiseth the stormy wind which lifteth up the waves thereof they mount up to the heaven they go down again to the depths their soul is melted because of trouble they reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wits end then they cry unto the lord in their trouble and he bringeth them out of their distresses he maketh the storm a calm so that the waves thereof are still then are they glad because they be quiet so he bringeth them unto their desired haven oh that men would praise the lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men End of Down to the Sea in Ships Number 9 of Sea Poems by Various This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Number 9, O Captain, My Captain by Walt Whitman O Captain, my Captain, our fearful trip is done. The ship has weathered every rack, the prize we sought is won the port is near the bells i hear the people all exulting while follow eyes the steady keel the vessel grim and daring but o oh, heart 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 leave you not the little spot where on the deck my captain lies fallen cold and dead o oh, captain my captain rise up and hear the bells rise up for you the flag is flung for you the bugle trills for you bouquets and ribboned wreaths for you the shores a crowding for you they call the swaying mass their eager faces turning o oh, captain dear father this arm i push beneath you it is some dream that on the deck you've fallen cold and dead my captain does not answer his lips are pale and still my father does not feel my arm he has no pulse nor will 
but the ship the ship is anchored safe its voyage closed and done from fearful trip the victor ship comes in with object won exult o shores and ring o bells but i with silent tread walk the spot my captain lies fallen cold and dead End of O Captain, My Captain Number 10 of Sea Poems by Various This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Number 10, The New Colossus by Emma Lazarus Not like the brazen giant of Greek fame, With conquering limbs astride from land to land, here at our sea-washed sunset gates shall stand a mighty woman with a torch whose flame is the imprisoned lightning and her name mother of exiles from her beacon hand glows world-wide welcome her mild eyes command the air-bridged harbour that twin cities frame keep ancient lands your storied pomp cries she with silent lips give me your tired your poor your huddled masses yearning to be free the wretched refuse of your teeming shore send these the homeless tempest-tossed to me i lift my lamp beside the golden door end of the new colossus number eleven of sea poems by various this librivox recording is in the public domain number eleven by the sea by emily dickinson i started early took my dog and visited the sea the mermaids in the basement came out to look at me and frigates in the upper floor extended hempen hands presuming me to be a mouse aground upon the sands but no man moved me till the tide went past my simple shoe and past my apron and my belt and past my bodice too and made as he would eat me up as wholly as a dew upon a dandelion sleeve and then i started too and he he followed close behind i felt his silver heel upon my ankle then my shoes would overflow with pearl until we met the solid town no man he seemed to know and bowing with a mighty look at me the sea withdrew end of by the sea number twelve of sea poems by various this librivox recording is in the public domain number twelve the admiral's ghost by alfred noyes i tell you a tale to-night which a seaman told to me with eyes that gleamed in the lantern light and a voice as low as the sea you could almost hear the stars twinkling up in the sky and the old wind woke and moaned in the spars and the same old waves went by singing the same old song as ages and ages ago while he froze my blood in that deep-sea night with the things that he seemed to know a barefoot pattered on deck ropes creaked then all grew still and he pointed his finger straight in my face and growled as a sea-dog will do you know who nelson was that poor little shrivelled form with a patch on his eye and the pinned-up sleeve and a soul like a north sea storm ask of the devonshire men they know and they'll tell you true he wasn't the poor little chawed-up chap that hardy thought he knew he wasn't the man you think his patch was a dern disguise for he knew that they'd find him out do you see if they looked him in both his eyes he was twice as big as he seemed but his clothes were cunningly made he'd both of his hairy arms all right the sleeve was a trick of the trade you've heard of spirits no doubt well there's more in the matter than that but he wasn't the patch and he wasn't the sleeve and he wasn't the laced cocked hat nelson was just a ghost you may laugh but the devonshire men they knew that he'd come when england called and they know that he'll come again 
i'll tell you the way it was for none of the landsmen know and to tell it you right you must go a starn two hundred years or so the waves were lapping and slapping the same as they are to-day and drake lay dying aboard his ship in nombre dios bay the scent of the foreign flowers came floating all around but i'll give my soul for the smell of the pitch says he in plymouth sound what shall i do he says when the guns begin to roar and england wants me and me not there to shatter her foes once more you've heard what he said maybe but i'll mark you the pints again for i want you to box your compass right and get my story plain you must take my drum he says to the old sea wall at home and if ever you strike that drum he says why strike me blind i'll come if england needs me dead or living i'll rise that day i'll rise from the darkness under the sea ten thousand miles away that's what he said and he died and his pirates listening round with their crimson doublets and jewelled swords that flashed as the sun went down they sewed him up in his shroud with a round shot top and toe to sink him under the salt sharp sea where all good seamen go they lowered him down in the deep and there in the sunset light they boomed a broadside over his grave as meanin to say good night they sailed away in the dark to the dear little isle they knew and they hung his drum by the old sea-wall the same as he told them to two hundred years went by and the guns began to roar and england was fighting hard for her life as ever she fought of yore it's only my dead that count she said as she says to-day it isn't the ships and it isn't the guns will sweep trafalgar's bay do ye guess who nelson was you may laugh but it's true as true there was more in that poor little chawed-up chap than ever his best friend knew the foe was creepin close in the dark to our white cliffed isle they were ready to leap at england's throat when oh you may smile you may smile but ask of the devonshire men for they heard in the dead of the night the roll of a drum and they saw him pass on a ship all shining white he stretched out his dead cold face and he sailed in the grand old way the fishes had taken an eye and his arm but he swept trafalgar's bay nelson was francis drake oh what matters the uniform or the patch on your eye or your pinned-up sleeve if your soul's like a north sea storm end of the admiral's ghost number thirteen of sea poems by various this librivox recording is in the public domain number thirteen a lover's quarrel by ella wheeler wilcox we two were lovers the sea and i we plighted our troth neath a summer sky and all through the riotous ardent weather we dreamed and loved and rejoiced together at times my lover would rage and storm i said no matter his heart is warm whatever his humour i loved his ways and so we lived through the golden days i know not the manner it came about but in the autumn we two fell out yet this i know twas the fault of the sea and was not my fault that he changed to me i lingered as long as a woman may to find what her lover will do or say but he met my smiles with a sullen frown and so i turned to the wooing town o oh, bold was this suitor and blithe as bold his look was as bright as the sea's was cold as the sea was sullen the town was gay he made me forget for a winter day for a winter day and a winter night he laughed my sorrow away from sight and yet in spite of his mirth and cheer i knew full well he was insincere and when the young buds burst on the tree the old love woke in my heart for the sea pride was forgotten i knew i knew that the soul of the sea like my own was true i heard him calling and lo i came to find him waiting forever the same and when he saw me with murmurs sweet he ran to meet me and fell at my feet and so again neath a summer sky we have plighted our troth the sea 
and I. End of A Lover's Quarrel Number 14 of Sea Poems by Various. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Number 14. A Channel Passage by Rupert Brooke. The damned ship lurched and slithered. Quiet and quick my cold gorge rose. The long sea rolled. I knew I must think hard of something or be sick, and could think hard of only one thing you. You you alone could hold my fancy ever and with you memories come sharp pain and dole now there's a choice heartache or tortured liver a seasick body or a you-sick soul do i forget you retchings twist and tie me old meat good meals brown gobbets up i throw do i remember acrid return and slimy the sobs and slobber of a last year's woe and still the sick ship rolls tis hard i tell ye to choose twixt love and nausea heart and belly end of a channel passage number fifteen of sea poems by various this librivox recording is in the public domain number fifteen on the seas and far away by robert burns to the tune o'er the hills and far away how can my poor heart be glad when absent from my sailor lad how can i the thought forego he's on the seas to meet the foe let me wander let me rove still my heart is with my love nightly dreams and thoughts by day are with him that's far away chorus on the seas and far away on stormy seas and far away nightly dreams and thoughts by day are i with him that's far away when in summer noon i faint as weary flocks around me pant haply in this scorching sun my sailor's thundering at his gun bullets spare my only joy bullets spare my darling boy fate do with me what you may spare but him that's far away on the seas and far away on stormy seas and far away fate do with me what you may spare but him that's far away at the starless midnight hour when winter rules with boundless power as the storms the forests tear and thunders rend the howling air listening to the doubling roar surging on the rocky shore all i can i weep and pray for his wheel that's far away on the seas and far away on stormy seas and far away all i can i weep and pray for his wheel that's far away peace thy olive wand extend and bid wild war his ravage end man with brother man to meet and as a brother kindly greet then may heaven with prosperous gales fill my sailors welcome sails to my arms their charge convey my dear lad that's far away on the seas and far away on stormy seas and far away to my arms their charge convey my dear lad that's far away end of on the seas and far away number sixteen of sea poems by various this librivox recording is in the public domain number sixteen north atlantic by carl sandburg when the sea is everywhere from horizon to horizon when the salt and blue fill a circle of horizons i swear again how i know the sea is older than anything else and the sea younger than anything else my first father was a landsman my tenth father was a sea lover a gypsy sea boy a singer of chanties oh blow the man down the sea is always the same and yet the sea always changes the sea gives all and yet the sea keeps something back the sea takes without asking the sea is a worker a thief and a loafer 
why does the sea let go so slow or never let go at all the sea always the same day after day the sea always the same night after night fog on fog and never a star wind on wind and running white sheets bird on bird always a sea bird so the days get lost it is neither saturday nor monday it is any day or no day it is a year ten years fog on fog and never a star what is a man a child a woman to the green and grinding sea the ropes and boards squeak and groan on the land they know a child they have named to-day on the sea they know three children they have named yesterday to-day to-morrow i made a song to a woman it ran i have wanted you i have called to you on a day i counted a thousand years in the deep of a sea-blue noon many women run in a man's head phantom women leaping from a man's forehead to the railings into the sea to the sea rim a man's mother a man's wife other women i asked a sure-footed sailor how and he said i have known many women but there is only one sea i saw the north star once and our old friend the big dipper only the sea between us take away the sea and i lift the dipper swing the handle of it drink from the brim of it i saw the north star one night and five new stars for me in the rigging ropes and seven old stars in the cross of the wireless plunging by night ploughing by day five new cool stars seven old warm stars i have been let down in a thousand graves by my kinfolk i have been left alone with the sea and the sea's wife the wind for my last friends and my kinfolk never knew anything about it at all salt from an old work of eating our grave clothes is here the sea kin of my thousand graves the sea and the sea's wife the wind they are all here to-night between the circle of horizons between the cross of the wireless and the seven old warm stars out of a thousand sea-holes i came yesterday out of a thousand sea-holes i come to-morrow i am kin of the changer i am a son of the sea and the sea's wife the wind end of north atlantic Number seventeen of Sea Poems by Various. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Number seventeen, Crossing the Bar by Alfred Tennyson. Sunset and evening star, and one clear call for me, and may there be no moaning of the bar when I put out to sea, but such a tide as moving seems asleep, too full for sound and foam when that which drew from out the boundless deep turns again home twilight and evening bell and after that the dark and may there be no sadness of farewell when i embark for though from out our bourne of time and place the flood may bear me far i hope to see my pilot face to face when i have crossed the bar end of crossing the bar End of Sea Poems, an idiosyncratic selection.